Hey, this is Sule Morvina, and tune in to The Relay for the latest news in boxing all around the world. Thank you for supporting myself and other female boxers. We truly appreciate it. Welcome to the motherfucking Relay. We're covering today's top boxing news. Ow! Okay, we'll start with this. Well, it's official. The Courtney versus Mitchell fight has been rescheduled for October 9th. She's going to be on the undercard of Smith versus Fowler. A great addition, I might add. And, you know, there's been a lot of talk about a Courtney versus Bridges rematch. How Ebony seems to want one, but Shannon, not so much. And, and this has sparked a lot of conversations. Conversations where people feel that Ebony has to earn a rematch, has to earn a second title shot, a second crack at that WBA title. And yeah, maybe she does. Maybe. It's not the craziest thing. I've ever heard, but need in terms of need, in terms of urgency, in terms of precedence. You know what needs to happen. You know, the Jamie Mitchell fight, it's an all right fight. I'm not against it. I, I like the fight, but I'd be lying to you if I said that I view Jamie Mitchell as being a step up from Ebony Bridges. Those two girls are in a very similar place as far as their quality of competition and their careers. Where they are. You see, I don't disagree with those out there who might feel that, you know, maybe Ebony does need to earn a rematch and, and maybe she does need to step it up. Maybe in her very next fight, she does need to face someone better than Beck Connolly. Maybe she does. In a general sense, yeah. But as far as need, the need to do something, the urgency, the precedence, well, Shannon Courtney is the champion. She's the one that has things she needs to do. As far as needing to do things. I mean, I don't disagree that Ebony Bridges needs to step it up. She needs to face a better caliber fighter than Beck Connolly. But in the case of Shannon Courtney... What, she doesn't need to step it up too? If Ebony Bridges is as bad as her critics make her out to be, then Shannon Courtney shouldn't be receiving much credit for having beaten her or for facing a fighter in a similar place to her, a fighter in a similar place to Ebony Bridges. It's Shannon Courtney that needs to step it up in all actuality because Shannon Courtney is the champion after all and there's a number one contender an Australian and no I'm not talking about Ebony an Australian challenger that goes by the name of Shannon O'Connell have you thought about how all of this breaks down have you thought about it Shannon Courtney says that she's not interested in fighting Ebony Bridges unless Ebony gets herself a title and, and that's going to be hard to do it is but if you're not fighting Ebony... And you're not unifying with anybody. You're not fighting a champion. You're fighting Jamie Mitchell. And Jamie's all right. Jamie's good the same way that Ebony's good. In all actuality, it should be Ebony Bridges fighting the likes of a Jamie Mitchell. Somebody like that. And it should be Shannon Courtney fighting the likes of a Shannon O'Connell. That's right. You see... Shannon Courtney's titleist. She's belt holder. She's champion. She's the one with the obligations. She's the one with the requisites. And there's a number one contender waiting for her that has been waiting for her. To all Ebony's critics. Yeah, Ebony needs to step it up, and I think she will. But so does Shannon Courtney, because Jamie Mitchell is not head and shoulders above either Ebony Bridges or Rachel Ball. She's a champion. I'm okay with the Mitchell fight. I'm looking forward to it. But what happens after that? Should Shannon Courtney successfully defend the WBA title? Is she going to move on from that into a unification match? And if she doesn't, at what point does she fight Shannon O'Connell? At what point are these guys and gals going to address the elephant in the room? I could go for Bridges versus O'Connell. I could definitely go for a fight like that. That's a sexy fucking fight. Oh, it is. Yeah. But Ebony doesn't actually need to fight Shannon. Shannon, she doesn't actually need to fight Ebony. Shotgun Shannon? She's number one. And she's been on a hell of a run. She gave unbeaten Bianca Elmir her first professional loss. Unbeaten Kylie Fulmer her first professional loss. And unbeaten Shernika Johnson her first professional loss. Shotgun Shannon O'Connell's got more experience than Ebony Bridges, by far, and more experience even than Shannon Courtney or the woman that beat her, Rachel Ball. And Shannon O'Connell, she's earned her way. She's earned her title shot. You ask me what needs to happen. And look, if Shannon makes it through the Jamie Mitchell fight, what needs to happen after that is either a unification match or a title defense against Shannon O'Connell, as far as need goes, as far as what needs to happen. Because, you know, Ebony Bridges, she's a challenger. She's free to move at her own pace. It's Shannon Courtney. She's the one with the responsibilities. You say that you don't want to give Ebony a rematch unless she can win herself a belt. So no rematch with Bridges 
uh, unless you're unifying titles, there's really no reason you shouldn't fight Shannon O'Connell. Of course, Ebony, Ebony ain't no champion. She ain't nothing but a contender. Free to move at her own pace. She can keep busy with a Maureen Shea or a Rosalinda Rodriguez, maybe a Melissa Odessa or a Shanika Johnson. She's free to have her pick of the litter because she's not the champion. She is merely a challenger. Yeah, she can fight Noriega Valverde. The onus to face a certain caliber of fighter isn't on the challenger. It's not on Ebony Bridges. It's on Shannon Courtney more than it's on Ebony. And if she makes it through the Mitchell fight, she's either got to unify a title with one of the other three champions at this weight or take care of Shannon O'Connell. Now the news, we're hearing more and more about Dillian Veitch next in the ring appearance and about Sean Franklin, who we've been hearing about for the last couple of weeks. But now we're also hearing about Chris Ariola. What do I think about this and what do I think about this news? Well, I'll be honest, I'm not crazy about the fight. If I'm being completely honest, I don't like it. I think that Chris Ariola. I mean, come on. Dillian Veidt is one of the top 10 heavyweights in the world. That's the consensus. And I have a few interpretations as to why he'd be looking to fight somebody like Chris or Sean Franklin. In all actuality, I think Chris Ariola versus Sean Franklin makes more sense than Chris Ariola versus Dillian Veidt. Sean Franklin needs to prove himself. Unbeaten Sean Franklin, who has yet to fight the likes of someone like Chris Ariola. I actually think Ariola versus Franklin makes more sense than Ariola versus Veidt, but there has to be a reason Dillian is even looking at this guy, and maybe it's because of the luck he hasn't had with Andy Ruiz, who he made a multi-million dollar offer to. Yeah, last year. Dillian Veidt and Andy Ruiz have both rebounded off their losses. Dillian rebounded off the loss to Povetkin by beating Povetkin, and more recently, Andy Ruiz rebounded off that loss to Anthony Joshua over a year ago with Chris Ariola, so both guys are in the winner's bracket, and the fight that actually makes sense is that fight. White versus Ruiz. But for whatever reason, Andy Ruiz Jr., he doesn't seem as receptive to fighting Dillian as Dillian seems to fighting Andy. Another fight that makes more sense to me than what's on the table is Dillian Veidt versus Charles Martin, former IBF heavyweight champion Charles Martin, who's been calling Dillian Veidt out. He wants shot. Yeah, that fight makes sense, too. And... It is a better fight than an Ariola fight. It's a better fight even than the Sean Franklin fight. Sean Franklin, who's an unbeaten up-and-comer, he is, but he hasn't fought any quality guys or even... Good gatekeepers. Good ones. Good journeymen. Like Chris Ariola. There are a few fights out there that make a lot more sense for Dillian Veidt than some of what's on the table right now. Another fight that almost immediately comes to mind is a Dillian Veidt versus Philippe Hergovic fight. Philippe Hergovic, who is experiencing some issues cornering a dance partner. I could really go for Dillian Veidt versus Philippe Hergovic. It's a great fight. But there is a reason that Dillian Veidt is moving the way that he's moving and doing what he's doing. There's a reason, a rhyme and a reason behind all of this. And it's You know, Andy Ruiz gets off at a Dillian Veidt fight, he turns it down. Nobody bats an eyelash. Nobody says anything. Where's the outrage? Where's the uproar? He turns down that Dillian Veidt fight, multi-million dollar fight, so he can come back here stateside and fight Chris Ariola, and he isn't lambasted for it? All right. Got guys like Luis Ortiz. He's keeping busy with the likes of an Alexander Flores. Who the fuck is Alexander Flores? Do you see what I'm getting at? These are the guys that are out there. They're fighting the... Chris Ariolas of the world. These are the guys that are out there. They're on Easy Street. They've been on Easy Street. Whereas Dillian Veidt, he's been keeping busy with the likes of the Joseph Parkers and Robert Hellaniuses and Derek Chisoras and Alexander Povetkins of the world. While all these other guys, they're on Easy Street. Well, Luis Ortiz did fight Wilder two times. Yeah, he did fight Wilder two times. And it's because Deontay Wilder rather fight Luis Ortiz twice than fight Dillian Veidt once. How long has he been going after that guy? Dillian Veidt finds himself in a situation, a legal situation where he has taken legal action against the WBC so that they will install him as their reigning heavyweight champion because neither Tyson Fury or Deontay Valder, the winner of their trilogy... Neither one of those two guys are likely to fight him. ...and the WBC, they don't want to make a decision now. They want to sit on their hands wait, wait a little while longer before they install him as the mandatory challenger to the winner of that fight. That's what's going on behind the scenes right now. Dillian Veidt knows that he's not likely to get the winner of Fury versus Wilder 3. So while he's waiting for a decision to be made on that, make some headway, 
He's not going to take chances the way he took chances before. That's why he's looking at guys like Sean Franklin. That's why he's looking at a guy like Chris Ariola. He's not going to make the same mistake twice. That's what I think is going on. And why? There was no uproar, no outrage from the boxing community at large when Andy Ruiz, former unified heavyweight champion Andy Ruiz, turned down a multi-million dollar offer to fight Dillian and ended up fighting Chris Ariola instead. He didn't get enough heat for that, not as much as he could have. So if the boxing community is perfectly okay with Andy Ruiz fighting that kind of guy, then it shouldn't bother them in the least bit if Dillian Veidt fights that same kind of guy. Because Dillian, unlike Andy, he tried to make a better fight, but it was Andy who turned it down. And Andy might have had his reasons. I'm not saying that he didn't. You know, he was coming off a loss, he was between trainers. I get it, I understand, but what the hell is any of that supposed to mean to Dillian Veidt? Dillian's trying to fight you. He wants to fight you, but you don't seem to want to fight him. So if the boxing community is going to let you get away with fighting a Chris Ariola, to Dillian, well, that makes it perfectly permissible. And that's what I think is going on. See, I understand Dillian Veidt's reasoning. I understand his rationale. And while that doesn't make this a good fight, and that doesn't make Chris a good opponent choice, it doesn't. I understand. I get it. That doesn't make the fight a mouth-watering fight, an intriguing fight. But I understand what the hierarchy of thought here is, especially when this same Chris Ariola in his last fight he managed to drop Andy Ruiz. He managed to hear the final bell. So what Dillian Veidt can then do is go in there against that same Chris Ariola and stop him to make a statement and make a statement on U.S. soil. He's about the Amir Khan fight. Where are we with it? Well, I mean, look, I think both of those guys identify that fight as the fight, you know, maybe even the only fight for them. Uh, I like to see Conor Ben in that mix as well. But, you know, I think... These guys want to make as much money as possible. They'll talk to everyone and they'll do the best deal for them. Any more to add on that, Kel? I just think Bar Fury AJ, it's still the biggest, biggest fight in British boxing. And I think everyone will still get very, very excited about that fight. He, he, know, he, knows, that, he knows that that fight, I want that fight, don't you? You do, well, you've always wanted that I've wanted that fight. And that I, fight, think, yeah. I think that I he actually that. wants it now. I think you want it as much as you did six, seven years ago. Of course I do. I've done everything in my career. That is the grudge match. What I'll just finish. Are we, are we close or what? Come on. As I said, look, he, the, the, both guys want as much money as possible. So we are we are a small piece of that. If it, if it's a, if there's a deal to be done, there's a deal to be done. But you know, Amir Khan does genuinely want the fight. I believe, and that's always you think been. Think I want it? Yeah, you've always wanted the fight. Will it happen? Uh, I think if everyone's sensible, yeah. It will happen. Now, from this IFL interview conducted by Coogan Cassius with Kel Brock and Eddie Hearn, you know, I didn't quite get the impression that Eddie Hearn himself is all that committed to making that fight happen. I mean, it seems like he's open to the idea. It seems like something that he might do, and I wouldn't rule it out. But Eddie himself, you know, he doesn't seem all that committed to being the one behind the fight. Timing is impeccable. Because at a time... When both guys seem to want the fight, both Kel Brock and Amir Khan, who very recently joined forces with Brian Bo Mac McIntyre, who trains Terrence Crawford and Shakur Stevenson and Jamel Herring. Oh, so he's not with Virgil Hunter anymore. Apparently not. Apparently Amir Khan has had a change of decorum. One is left to wonder why. What's he got on his mind? What's going on? And undoubtedly, the Kel Brook fight. That's probably it. I wouldn't underestimate the marquee value of this thing. I really wouldn't. I mean, if you ask a Brit, you're probably going to hear a lot of people saying that the fight should have happened a long time ago and it's not here today what it could have been a few years back. And I think you'll bump into a lot of those people. But I still wouldn't underestimate the value of the fight. I watched through this interview and you know, I kind of got the impression that Kel Brook, he wants Eddie Hearn to be involved. He wants Matchroom to be the promotional outfit that gets the deal done and showcases the fight. I kind of got the impression that Brooke is pitching the idea to Eddie, and Eddie, he's not quite committed to it because, you know, a lot has happened. That whole thing with Kel Brock going around Eddie Hearn, doing his own deal with top rank to fight Terrence Crawford, that likely left a bad taste in Eddie Hearn's mouth. Sky Sports didn't pick up that fight. We know the Brooke people, they weren't happy about it, but according to Eddie... He wasn't involved in that set of negotiations. He wasn't a party to any of that. There was a tiff, a rift between them. I'm sure you guys remember. And I think that's still on Eddie Hearn's mind here today. Yeah, because he doesn't seem all that committed to this fight. They could always shop the fight around. 
shop it over to Sky, maybe have Top Rank be the lead promoter for the fight, it being that very recently Top Rank jumped into bed with Sky Sports. They got a deal between them. And, you know, maybe the people over there at Top Rank can put it together for them. Sky Sports does need content. Ever since Matchroom left and went all in with DAZN, there are big shoes to fill over there at Sky Sports. And, and you know, maybe they could do the fight. Well, if they do the fight, what you're looking at is a Sky Sports pay-per-view. In order for these two guys to get paid the way that they want to get paid. The last hoorah, the last dance, the swan song, what could very well be the swan song of Amir Khan and Kel Brook. You can bet your bottom dollar, they want top dollar to do this fight. And on Sky, the only way they get it is if they build this thing as a pay-per-view. I don't know how the British boxing public would feel about that. But Sky is an option. Sky is in bed with Top Rank, after all. And there are rumors and rumblings that Top Rank might do some shows over there in the United Kingdom. Unconfirmed rumors, but rumors nonetheless. So even if those rumors check out, Top Rank don't know the Brits the way that Matchroom knows the Brits. And I'm sure that Kel Brock would be much more comfortable letting Eddie Hearn and Matchroom do the fight. That looks to me. Pay attention to the verbiage that Eddie Hearn used. That, you know, Matchroom is a small piece of that. And, and if there's a deal to be done, then a deal will be done. And, and, and the fighters have to be reasonable. I mean, pay attention to the language that Eddie Hearn is using. He doesn't sound all that committed to this fight. He really doesn't. And at a time... There's a buzz. When the Brits are buzzing over an Anthony Fowler versus Liam Beefy Smith fight, I think that this fight... If it were to get made... Even now, even when these two guys are past their best... It's the rivalry between them that sells the fight. That's the sizzle. That's the selling point. And that's the intrigue. The bragging rights associated with it all. Finally getting that answer. Who would have won? Kel Brock or Amir Khan, I think that this fight could get the Brits buzzing. I wouldn't underestimate its marquee value. Perhaps it's not as big a fight as it used to be, but it still can do good business. And the question is, will Eddie Hearn decide to get involved? Will Matchroom do the fight? Because it kind of feels like Kel Brock, he wants them to be involved. He wants them to do the fight. And maybe this shouldn't be billed as a pay-per-view. Yeah, maybe it shouldn't. You shouldn't have to pay an arm and a leg to see these two guys swap punches. Not at this stage in their careers. But if Matchroom does the fight, you won't have to. You'll see it as part of your DAZN subscription. The issue there is... What kind of money do these guys want? What kind of guarantees are both Amir Khan and Kel Brock going to ask for? Because while Matchroom has a very big budget, they are trimming the fat. That's what we've been hearing in reference to the potential Mikey Garcia versus Regis Prograrius fight. So maybe it happens and maybe it doesn't. 